My next stop in Moscow is the Cosmonautics and Aviation Museum, just a little bit outside the city. Now, this is a wonderful museum that I'm about to go in. It combines Soviet space exploration achievements with what the Russian Federation has done, and it's kind of split into three parts. There is a part about health and how it, that uh, biology and how that all fits into space exploration. There are some wonderful, wonderful exhibitions with real space capsules, a, um, a living kind of a model of the Mir space station, which cosmonauts used to practice on, they used to train on before being deployed to the actual Mir space station. And also there is an abundance of exhibitions and, and you know, a kind of videos, informative videos, and there's a research center right at the end as well. I've come here to explore what this wonderful museum has to offer. Well, I've come here to the Cosmonautics and Aviation Center in Moscow to find out more how advanced the Soviets and later on the Russians were in the space race. To give you a starter, let's have a look at Sputnik, the first ever satellite to go around the world. Now, the Soviets didn't only stop with the satellite. Soon after, they, saw, they sent this cute little dog um, by the name of Laika. Now, Laika was a Soviet street dog. And the reason they sent her was because she was obedient, she was small enough, and she was just good-natured. Now, she'd go up into space, and she was supposed to stay there for about 10 days, but unfortunately, the vessel that she was in kind of overheated, and um, she is no longer with us, of course. But the main thing about this project was that the Soviets wanted to prove that a living being could go into space, and they did it with uh, Laika. Following Laika, there were two other dogs, Belka and Strelka, that were sent up to orbit and spent a day in space. They were able to return safely as the first ever higher living organisms to survive an orbital trip in outer space. Once back on Earth, Strelka gave birth. The Soviets, with their great humor, gifted one of the puppies to US President John F. Kennedy and his wife, not only as a friendly gesture, but a way of reaffirming their lead in the space race. That is the very capsule Yuri Gagarin, the first ever Russian cosmonaut to um, circle, well, to get into space rather, and orbit the Earth, if I'm not mistaken, used. Well, this same capsule, as a matter of fact, was used six times. And um, it was quite an interesting one because it wasn't like the modern ones where you kind of come down uh, and, and have a soft landing onto the Earth. What would happen is about seven kilometers above sea level, you would have to eject yourself from this and the uh, capsule would fall with a different parachute and you yourself would fall with a different parachute. Um, now, there it is. Now, Yuri Gagarin might have been the first one to get into space, but Alexei Leonov, was the first one to do the space walk. And this is what he would have looked like when he was out in space. As a matter of fact, the spacesuit would have expanded and decreased and so on and so forth. And there is a very famous Soviet story that he goes and does one of his spacewalks. He's trying to get back into his space station. And because the suit is so large, he can't get in. It's a life or death situation. He makes the call. Now he's got to go in feet first, but instead of going in feet first, he actually goes in head first, somehow maneuvers himself in there, saves the space program, but also saves himself. Now that's Alexi Leona. Now let me take you over here. And as we walk, I want to kind of pan the camera up here. This is Elmas. That translates as diamond in English. It was the first Russian military uh, satellite, as far as I know. But it's definitely a Russian uh, military satellite. I don't know if it was the first one. I'm told it was the first one. And it's a very interesting one indeed. I'll tell you why. First of all, it's sheer size very impressive for when it was sent up there these bits here these kind of gray bits are in a kind of their radar deflectors uh, so foreign powers unwanted people can't see it even with a telescope or a radar 
so that is quite interesting it has different compartments so you have a compartment for sleeping for eating for uh, you know research to keep your belongings so on and so forth <clears throat> right here there is a rather impressive camera now they say that that camera was so powerful from around 120 150 kilometers above sea level you can look down and you can see in detail what model a particular car might be now of course russians were the first ones or the soviets rather were the first ones to get into space but the americans were the first ones to get on the moon but fear not of course the soviets had a mission they were also going to get onto the moon it didn't quite go as to plan but they did create some impressive rockets you can see two of them right behind me here one and two now i'm here because i want to show you the sheer scale of how these are now here you can see that it's quite large and i'd like to see if you can zoom into the the red kind of rockets down here i believe there are about 13 of these rockets going around and around now this is already quite a big rocket and you can see it there now if you can follow me i want to show you in reality how big those each one of those rockets really is and you can see it right here so this actually equates to one of those red rockets over there so you'd literally have 13 of these along the bottom of it and then that would kind of give you an idea of how colossal these really were but for now just have a look at the sheer scale and please come this way have a look at this rocket you see you can see the thrusters there and have a look at what they would have looked like in reality moving on right here is a magnificent display that is the exact replica of the Mir space station now the Mir space station shot up into the uh, into space in 1986 it was supposed to be there for five years but it only got decommissioned in 2001 used for 15 years let's not forget massive massive station very integral and very important to the russian space exploration and of course this museum this whole facility is all about celebrating russian uh, space achievement and Mir is perhaps the piece de la resistance of this uh, museum over here. Shot up in 86, decommissioned in 2001, has two big accidents, unfortunately. The second one is too big, so they have to decommission it. The actual one falls, so 90% is destroyed in the atmosphere, burns up, and about 10% uh, falls into the uh, water. I, I believe it's in the Pacific, could be the Atlantic, don't quote me on it. But this one you see over here is as authentic as it gets because this one here is one of three models that they had on Earth that uh, cosmonauts and foreign astronauts, of course, could onboard it because, of course, this was between the Soviet era and the uh, Russian Federation era. Uh, so it kind of crossed over end of the 80s, of course. Um, so 86, this was launched. So this is actually one of the three replicas where they would practice, uh, where they would train before going up, being deployed onto the real one itself. So rather impressive. I am gonna go upstairs now and give you a better view of it. Before that, I wanna show you some other things over here. A modern kind of US style space shuttle over here. And the Russians had a rather interesting idea. So let me try and run through this. You have the airplane over here. Instead of taking off like so, you fly with the airplane. The um, shuttle is on top. There's a massive kind of, you know, I, I believe that's where the, uh, the fuel is stored. And then once this is up as high as it can get the airplane, it's a massive airplane, let's not forget. So, beginning of the 1980s never realized and um, it's an AN-225 Mivia carrier aircraft and on top of it the um, shuttle 
So it would go up and the idea was for the aircraft to go up and for the shuttle to kind of take off as a normal airplane would, but it would be the space shuttle that takes off. Never really worked, never realized. However, it was a great idea. And over here, they've got the um, kind of wonderful kind of replica of it on top. Now, without further ado, let's go upstairs. Let's have a closer look at the Mir space station and also at some cosmonaut suits, rather interesting cosmonaut suits. Now, upstairs is where you can really get a good look at the Mir space station. You can't actually go on it. However, you can kind of walk along it to see what it looks like. And we shall do precisely that. See, that is the replica Mir space station over here. Oh yeah, that's the Mir space station. It's a uh, great, great exhibit. Really gives you an idea of how big it is, how impressive it is. Of course, floating in space would have probably been minute, but it is a rather interesting one to see. And now let me walk up there. But of course, it is a busy, busy day today at the museum, but let's walk up there so I can show you what it looks like. So you can't really see too much inside, but again, just like any other space station, this is one of the larger ones. So it had an impressive, uh, you could grow plants in it. So turnips, um, oats, wheat, I believe, not oats, wheat, and so on and so forth. You can grow inside. Of course, they had a shower, they had uh, places to eat, uh, places to rest, and places for research over there as well. And, you know, upstairs, again, there's a lot of impressive things. So when you come over here, you have the different cosmonaut outfits. So this is an inner <coughs> cosmonaut outfit, they say. This is quite a modern one. And then you've got another one here. Again, this is an older one. This is from 1965. Um, never used apparently but there it is and there is the uh, the Gagarin suit over here this is uh, it weighs about 20 kilograms this is from 1960 right so of course he went up into space in 61 and then um, and then the modern suits actually weigh a lot more this is how a current cosmonaut would look and this is this suit weighs about 100 kilograms but of course once you're up there, um, you know, with gravity not being present, it doesn't weigh that much. Well, and then there's a seat here where, um, you know, where Gagarin would have sat being shot up into space. And it kind of holds you in uh, to make sure that you don't uh, move around too much. Well, there we go. That's a very quick tour of the lovely museum. <laughs>